All right, everyone. Good morning. Welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I'm out on the road. I'm doing a whole bunch of things on the road. I've got multiple service calls to do today. And this is one that's it's a little bit unusual. I've got an Alter G that is not spin the belt. So I don't know any other information other than it's not spin the belt. So I guess we're gonna find out together. Let's go do this. Okay, so I put on the fancy pants and uh, the unit does inflate. The entire uh, bladder system does work fine. It works beautifully. And the incline works. Now, my first thought is that there's some sort of loss of communication between the controller and the treadmill. But if the incline motor works, that means it's something more relevant to the drive motor. And I would assume that the communications is usually like a serial bus between the controller and the treadmill, like it is on cardiac stress testers and a bunch of other objects. But we don't know. Hard to say. So what I got to do now is I got to go inside the bladder, right there. I'm going to raise it up, go inside it. It's going to be a hot and absolute sweaty mess. Um, but you have to lift the cover off the treadmill main motor and take a look and make sure that the drive belt, first off, is intact. Because if the drive belt is not intact, then you're not going to have belt movement, right? But I didn't feel a vibration like the motor was trying to run. So then I might actually have to use a multimeter and dive a little bit deeper from there. We'll see. Got to get inside now. <laughs> okay, so I am inside the Alter G. That's my only breathing hole is this one above me. And uh, down here is where the motor and the controller are. So let's take a look and see what we're dealing with. Okay, here is the Pulse Width Modulated DC motor. This is a um, 180 volt DC on this model. It's a four uh, horsepower. And right here is the motor that controls the uh, tilt. So this is your main drive motor. Worst case scenario, best case scenario would have been the drive belt. Easily enough to obtain, this drive belt is obviously fine. And the motor is not seized by any means. Actually, it feels pretty good. Right here is the controller board, and here is the dilemma. You got main power that comes into the control board, and then right here, let's see, this, this cable right here on this side, that is your serial bus information that comes from the controller that tells this guy to pulse DC for this guy or to turn this guy on and control your incline. So what we can assume since we have incline is that the AC on this guy is fine, which means uh, the chopper driver for this guy might be fine. That's a little frustrating. You can see right here, I've got the cover off. I'm inspecting the brushes. See how much uh, brush, dust, brush dust we have built up. Sorry guys, it's incredibly hot inside this device. Um, where you can see it, it's really not that bad. Uh, it, it appears to be fine. The brushes, uh, appear to be just fine and I was expecting as much normally you would see brush dust everywhere and you would actually hear it too when you go to move it back and forth I'm not hearing anything out of the normal and I can't really see the commutator unfortunately it's buried in this motor even from the back you can see it there's some sort of like the shroud see it there's a composite in there that's kind of blocking a lot of stuff from getting into the motor. So what we have to do is we have to surmise. Now I have my multimeter here because what we can do is we can disconnect the DC motor right here and we can check how much ohms are on the coils. So let's go ahead and do that next. Okay guys, I got my night body on. I did a whole video on this guy. It's a head mounted flashlight and it is perfect. <laughs> Just in case you guys ever decide you want to climb inside an Alter G, it gives me hands free so I can actually show you guys what's going on. It's so nice. 
All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our measurements on ohms for this motor. Okay, so right here, you can see the black and the white wires, which normally connect down here to an activation relay. See that? Which the relay, I have not de determined if it's bad or good yet. So we're not there yet. So here you go. This is across the coils of the motor. And what I'm gonna do is spin the motor just a little bit. Let's take a look. All right, it is jumping around quite a bit. It goes right back to one ohm quite easily. So that is telling me that the commutator on this guy is actually pretty good, because other words, it would never go back down to one ohm. There you go. In fact, you see it's staying in the 100 ohms, 200 ohms, 300 ohms, while it's moving, and then it goes back to one ohm. Okay, so the, my commentator is good. I can go ahead and put my uh, brush cover back on. I really wasn't expecting that guy to be bad. Um, I do have some brush dust down here, but now we draw into conclusion what could possibly be wrong. One of the things that could potentially be wrong is that relay right there. And the other thing, the more likely thing, is going to be your control board. So that is where we're at at the moment. So guys, it's an interesting problem, but uh, this control board, the only way to really test it would be to see if the voltage is going to the motor. In order to do that, you have to calibrate it and whatnot. Um, other words, there's some sort of diagnostic mode that I'm unaware of. There has to be some sort of diagnostic mode to activate that motor and tell it to go into a drive, to which then you can measure the voltage and everything much better than what I'm doing now. But at the moment, the motor's fine. The control board looks like it might be at issue. The other situation would be the serial cable, which goes up to the controller. And we'll take a look at that next. Okay guys, I just uh, finished up debriefing the customers. The unit is still down. I plugged it all back in and I tried running it yet again. And it's same, same conditions. So I, I checked the contactor down there that activates it. Um, and the contactor itself is activated by the main control board. And it looked like the contacts were fine. So I would justify a replacement control board at this point. Anyway, uh, the photos of the control board, the part numbers, the serial number and all that, that's all getting sent back to the key contractor for this job. And um, they're going to dispatch an official Alter-G repair party. Uh, hopefully this time, these guys bring out the control board because last time they thought I didn't know what I was talking about and they dispatched somebody from Dallas to Houston which is like four four and a half hour drive they came all the way out and said well yep it sure is it's it's a control board all right and then they drove all the way back to Dallas and then came out another day with the control board it's absolutely ridiculous hopefully this time they just bring the board with them and uh, although I can't prove essentially that it's the board it's one of the only things that's left so it is what it is at this moment unless there's some sort of diagnostic menu that i'm unaware of that will run the treadmill independent of the bladder inflation if there is would have been nice to know that however it's not completely essential because that control board is is sus at this moment so guys um that's that's how it is you know sometimes you win sometimes you lose sometimes it's a draw today is a draw so uh, I'm dirty as hell. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys.